Hey everybody, it's Ginny, VS Ginny. Um, it is my week 42 post-op VSG update. Um, today is Friday, January 15th, 2016. Last week I was 329.2 pounds, 149.3 kilos. This week I'm 324.4 pounds or 147.1 kilos. So a loss of 4.8 pounds or 2.2 kilos this week, which is amazing. But you know what's even more amazing? What that means. That means for me that I am now at my lowest adult weight ever and smaller than I was in high school. Pretty amazing. Um, I've been out of high school for a little while now, shall we say. And um, yeah, I, shortly after high school was when a doctor told me that at 325 pounds, I wouldn't see another five years. I would die in five years if I didn't lose weight. And I genuinely felt like I was the fattest person on earth. On earth. Like I felt like I couldn't do anything. I couldn't like go on walks with my friends. Like I, um, like all I could see were the things I couldn't do. And, um, it's hard for me now starting to work out more, more, more seriously um, and seeing what like other people can do even people who are close to my size like how much more they can do than I can and like I was feeling like a beast there for a while and um, starting to see like starting to see like I said how how much people who are even close to my size can do and they can do more than I can. And it's just, it's going to be so important for me not to let myself compare myself, let myself compare myself to other people. Um, I need to really keep my perspective on this huge accomplishment and this amazing progress that I've made. This is a big milestone and I really need to, um, to cherish that and to respect myself for how 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 far I've come and focus on that and focus on what I can do now um, instead of what I still can't do um, because what I can do now the list is so long like things that I couldn't do before and it's it's amazing and my life is so much more free and that's really what is important like there are so many fewer restrictions on my life than there used to be um, so yeah I, I wish I could go back and tell like tell that girl who was 18 and being told that and being tormented in high school that it gets better you know and um that you're not the fattest person in the world trust me it can get a lot like you can get a lot fatter <laughs> you can get a lot bigger and 325 really isn't the like end of the world because i thought when my doctor said to me that i have five years to live i thought to myself I have spent my entire life trying to lose weight because I really sort of had much of my childhood and um, early teenage years were spent trying to lose weight. And I never felt good enough. I never felt like my body was good enough. My weight was good enough. And I thought, well, if my doctor said that, it must be true. I've got five years to live. and. If I can't lose weight, which I can't, I've proven over and over again that I fail at weight loss, um, then what's the point in even trying? I'm just going to enjoy my life, eat whatever I want, and enjoy the next five years because nothing after that is promised to me. And um, I do think about where I would be if she hadn't said that to me. Like, I don't think doctors realize how much impact their, their statements can have. I see sometimes weight loss shows doctors being like, oh, you're going to die if you don't do X, Y, Z in five years. And I think if, if you're still this size in five years, and I think how destructive is it potentially to say that to somebody, you know? Like, I know for some people it lights a fire under them, but doctors, by saying that without knowing how their patients are going to react, are taking a risk, in my opinion. But anyway, that's why I'm in therapy, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, eating disorder therapy is one of the best things I've done for myself. And in fact, I'm spending um, a weekend at an intensive um, eating disorder workshop. 
So I'm actually really looking forward to that. I don't experience myself as a binge eater anymore. Um, I haven't actually binged like to the point I made myself ill from eating in years. Um, probably 15 to 20 years now. But I do, like, I am obviously struggling with a variety of feelings around the amazing things that are happening to me, the, the huge milestones, how much my life is changing, how I sometimes feel like I'm in free fall with this weight loss. It's both a really good feeling and a really scary feeling. Um, and I just think I'm, I'm a big believer in therapy. So, um, yeah, this, uh, this weekend long workshop should be good for me. Um, let's see. So just to give you a quick number recap, like I, excuse me, like I always do, my high weight was 600 pounds, 272.1 kilos in January 2014. Date of surgery, which was 28 March 2015, I was 488.2 pounds, 221.4 kilos. So total weight loss so far, 275.6 pounds or 125 kilos. Amazing. Total weight loss since surgery, 163.8 pounds, 74.2 kilos. Also amazing. So some NSVs that I've had this week. Um, my endocrinologist was able to weigh me for the first time ever on her scales. They they go up to 100, 160 kilos. I can't remember what that is in pounds. Um, but I hadn't seen her for a few months and she, I literally walked in and she couldn't like, she didn't look in my eyes. Her, 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 her eyes went straight to my torso and she's like the incredible shrinking woman. So, um, yeah, she's, she's, she's really thrilled with, with how I'm doing. And I think her scales are actually off. They registered me as significantly lower than my scales did. Um, we're talking like a 15 pound difference, pretty significant difference. Um, but I also felt like my feet weren't completely on the scales. And I think that's probably why they're like a different shape than my scales are. They're, they're analog, not digital. They're not like rectangular. They're kind of feet shaped and I felt like mine weren't totally on it. So anyway, she might be uh, disappointed with my weight loss next time. If, um, if I manage to get fully on the scales, <laughs> she'll be like, Oh, you didn't lose as much as I thought. Um, but anyway, that's okay. Um, another NSV I had this week, I was able to sit in a regular bus seat instead of the handicapped ones. Um, on Sydney buses, they have, you know, regular bus seats, kind of bench seats um, that there's one on either side of the aisle. They go all the way back. Um, but there's not a lot of room from front to back, from the back of the seat in front of you to the front of your seat. And because of the way I'm shaped, if I tried to sit in them, um, my knees would be pressed up so hard against the seat um, in front of me that I would be in excruciating pain. Um, like even for like for the half 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 an hour it would take me to get somewhere. Um, so I have been unable to sit on those seats, and now I can. There's my knees touch, but it's not like crammed into there. So that's just, that's amazing. That opens up more seating options for me. That means I won't have to take the handicap seats anymore, which opens up options for other people, which I feel really good about. Um, people who need it more. So I'm excited. Um, oh, and the, uh, pathologist chair, like when you go get blood drawn here, they're all like armed chairs with arms that are kind of out diagonally and the chair is pretty tall. Um, I haven't been able to sit in those. I've had to like lean against those because my hips wouldn't fit between the two arms um, for a couple of years now, for the couple of years that I've lived here. And this last time I went to get blood drawn last week, I was able to sit in it. <laughs> so very cool. Um, it's the little things, you know, but I like to keep track of them and uh, memorialize them to help me remember like all the things I can do now, like I was talking about before. Um, my exercise physiologist, things are going really well with him. Um, he actually um, did a bunch of testing on me the, um, at, at my last um, appointment with him this past week. He tested how many times I could uh, stand up and sit down in 30 seconds, how long I could balance on each foot, um, how much I could lift at the different weight machines, how far I could walk around to two two markers in I think six minutes, um, just like a a bunch of different uh, capability testing, 
and he, um, I took him photos at his uh, request of the gym here in our apartment complex. And he's spending um, this week. He's going to be designing a workout program for me that that I can do here um, where I live um, in between seeing him. So, um, and this week he's going to come here instead of me going this upcoming week. Um, he's going to come here to to our apartment complex gym instead of me going to see him and we're going to work out on the equipment here which I'm very excited about because I get to actually learn how to use this equipment specifically for my body in ways that will prevent injury and you know obviously maximize my fitness so I'm very excited about that um I have confirmed that the elliptical is evil <laughs> Um, my husband and I went and worked out on the ones in the gym here again, um, and he has confirmed for me that he thinks they're about 25% harder than other ellipticals he's been on, which made me feel a little better. I did five minutes on the one at my exercise physiologist's gym, but I was only able to do four minutes on the one here, and that was barely. Um, going to see if I can make like four minutes and 10 seconds today. <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to go work out right after this actually. Um, and let's see. Um, oh, this week, the, the one downer thing happened. I was in central station and some dude, like long haired dude in a trucker hat, really skinny, um, felt the need to come over to me and say, um, you should really think about losing weight. Like he's dropping some revelation on me. Like, oh, really? I had no idea. But like, it makes me so mad because you can't tell looking at somebody what their situation is, how much weight they may have already lost, or if they have a medical condition causing them to gain weight or what. Like, you have no idea. Um, or maybe they just don't want to lose weight. Maybe they're happy with their bodies and that's their business, not yours. <laughs> And so I actually told him that. I said, you know, I've already lost 125 kilos. And I said that to him. I said it in kilos, obviously, because of where I am. I've already lost 125 kilos. You don't know someone's situation until you've talked to them. So maybe think before you open your mouth. And I said it pretty much just like that. And he kind of did that and walked away muttering to himself. Um, so I'm glad I stood up for myself, but I wish people weren't so, didn't feel so entitled to comment on larger people's bodies. It's like we're more vulnerable. Our bodies are um, representations of moral failure. And I really believe that society as a whole believes that right now, which just drives me insane. I hate that. Um, my weight has nothing to do with, with my morals. Thank you very much. But um, yeah, no, I, I really wish people would get it through their heads that you're not helping anybody by commenting on their weight. Stop it. Get the heck out. Um, so anyway, so, but other than that, it's been a really good week. Um, I have a couple of shout outs. Um, Amy gets a VSG, had her one year search anniversary, and she also had a giveaway on her channel, which I won. And I was so surprised and so excited. Um, because I never really enter any of the w WLS giveaways, at least not consciously, because most of them are like US only, which to be fair is completely understandable. Shipping here is insanely expensive. Um, and I don't expect anybody to, to want to shoulder that. So I get that, you know, so I just don't ever really pay attention to giveaways. I just comment on videos when I have something to say, um, when like people are my friends and I want to, you know, support them. Or if I have something helpful to say, I'll comment. Like, I don't usually do it with any sort of other intent than that. But this time, my comment won me a prize. What do you know? <laughs> so very excited to see um, what Amy decides uh, to send me. She and Liz 
and Lorraine, I believe, and Patty, and I saw Gastric Rose in there somewhere. Like a bunch of people are in California right now getting together, being awesome together, and I'm so jealous. I hope you ladies are just having so much fun. Um, and let's see. Oh, shout outs I was doing. <laughs> I get distracted. Um, my friend Rachel, aka aka Recreate just had her gastric bypass so excited for her she was saying in her video that she had a little bit of a rough start but she's starting to feel better now so I'm very excited for her welcome to welcome to the losers bench honey you're gonna do amazing um, and I had um, another friend recently who I just found out had gastric bypass, but she's not part of the WS community um, yet at least <laughs> she might choose to be at some point I don't know um, she's not on any like WS like pages or anything as far as I know she's not a youtuber as far as I know um, so I'm not gonna out her publicly but you know who you are I think it's awesome what you did and um, like like I told you if you ever need support I'm here so I'm just an inbox message away and that goes for all of you love lovely lovely I cannot talk. Lovely viewers. And now I need to go to the gym and get my workout in for the day. So I love you guys and I'll see you next week. Bye.